I uh, want to thank everybody for being on this call or watching this call later. Uh, I want to thank the Hendersonville Chamber of Commerce, who is a complete bipartisan um, in this race, as well as I am a Robertson County resident, so I do not vote in any ward um, or in Sumner County. On the call now, we have Jim Waters representing Ward 6. Thanks for being on the call, Jim. Ma'am, thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Jim Waters. I'm Alderman, Ward 6. <clears throat> I've been married to a beautiful lady for, well, I can't say how long. <laughs> anyway, we've lived in Hensonville for 43 years. We have two children. We have a son named Terry, a daughter named Tammy. We have three wonderful granddaughters and four great grandsons. Uh, I am a Army veteran. I have a sort of a different take on how I got into this uh, uh, representation of uh, Hendersonville. Don't know whether you're going to ask me or not, but if you don't mind, I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and get ahead of the game. Uh, again, when <clears throat> about four years after I got out of the service and returned home, we started a, uh, a business, an insurance claims uh, a business. And during these uh, several several years, I had the uh, opportunity to uh, meet uh, some nonprofit organization people. Uh, some of them were veterans, just like me. And, and most of them had the same desire and ambition that I had when I came home from the service. But for some reason, things never worked out for these gentlemen and ladies. And it really gave me a really went deep in my, my mind and the feeling that I had inside. And it, it's hard to explain. But when I had the opportunity to, to honor the residents of Ward 6, the feeling I had back then is what I needed. So these past eight years that I've been to Alderman Ward 6 has been a wonderful experience for me. I've, I've honored meeting so many residents in Ward 6. I feel being retired from the service has given me the golden opportunity to be a full-time representative for Ward 6. Uh, I, I can appreciate and I understand some of my colleagues on this board, they have regular full-time jobs and they're unable to respond to our contestants complaints when they call. That's why I say it's, it's not about the two or three meetings a month that we go and we vote on resolutions and we vote on ordinance. It's the contact, it's the service that we provide to our people and our ward. That is so important. It's about answering the call when that person calls you. And by the way, that person put me in this position. And to me, I say again, no way you can solve a, a complaint over the phone. You can't do it. You've got to go over there and be in person. You've got to show them that you appreciate being uh, a alderman for them. We need to be available at any time that they call, get the information. I just don't understand why I hear some people say, call City Hall, call City Hall. No, that's, that's not what I do. When I go see these people, I look at the, the damage, whether it's drainage, whether it's paving, or whatever it is, and I try to make pictures, and I, then I will contact City Hall. If it's public works, if it's codes, or whatever. Let, let me do that. I know who to call. So I don't understand when people say, we'll call City Hall. No, I, I can't do that. If it's a trash issue, I can go to it in a, in a heartbeat. And I can call and tell them you, you missed this, you missed that one. And believe me, we do have a lot of misses, okay? Um, I believe one of my opponents mentioned earlier that uh, I did that for her when she called. I went out and looked at her uh, pothole, as you want to call it that. And uh, 
a driveway and I took pictures and it wasn't very long till we had public works out there helping her. And I, I really, I know she appreciates it. I really do. So that's, that's why I'm in this, this, I love it. I, I, I just love representing people. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. If elected for this next term, what are some of your goals? Oh, some of my goals. We've got in Ward 6, we've got two major problems. One is on Stop 30 Drake's Creek intersection. That has been a flood disaster for as long as I can remember. Every time we get a two or three hour downpour, it floods the, 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 floods the bridge. It floods all that uh, property down there. And where I live here on Southburn Drive, we get it off of Drake's Creek. So Drake's Creek is still a problem when it comes to heavy rain. And it's been on the agenda for years and years. So that's one of my big issues. If I'm fortunate enough to be reelected to keep pushing and let's get that intersection straightened out, whatever it takes. Some told me that it's going to have to be right. We're going to have to raise the bridge. Okay. If that's what it's going to take, if that's going to avoid flooding every time it rains, let's get it done. Another thing is on stop 30 itself. That is a dangerous, dangerous road from Drake's Creek all the way to New Shackle Island. We have got to do something about widening stop 30 some way, somehow. You know, we attempted to put some asphalt on the side of the road here several, several months ago. And the first rain, it just washed it all away. That was not the answer. It is a dire, it's a dangerous road. And that's another one of my priorities if I'm so fortunate to be uh, reelected. And of course, we still got paving. You've heard the people before me talk about the paving and paving. Yes, we have a lot of paving that we need to do. Uh, we got two right here in Ward 6, Glen Oaks Subdivision and Alexander Place, both of them. Uh, I've, I've got the chart here in front of me that shows that when we hired a, uh, a survey company called PCI years ago, I think maybe 10, 12 years ago, um, they went out and they looked at every street in the city and they came back with their survey and Glen Oaks and Alexander Place, uh, Burham Circle over in there, they were on that list. That's been what, 10, 12 years ago, but those streets have not been paved probably for 25 years. So we need to get get uh, get our paving in order. Um, Very good. All right, so we've heard you talk about some of your goals in Ward 6, important issues to you. How do you plan to address those or pay for those? <clears throat> How to address them is, is to keep working with the, the board that's uh, and work with the public works department, which that comes under. But the main thing is to work with the board. We've got to, we've got to unite ourselves on the board. It, it's, uh, and I won't go into that because you've heard it already from other people. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to badmouth anybody right now. Uh, I think everybody knows how I feel, but that, that's that's a different story. But that's where it starts. It it starts with your your your, your committee, whether it's general, whether it's public works, or whether it's public safety. That's where it starts. And then you go from there and it comes before Obama and you know, seven votes, that's the name of the game. Seven votes will get you anything. So that that's my desire is to unite the board again. Let's work together. Let's be professionals. I mean, well, I don't want to get off on that about the board you, again, but you'd be surprised. I've been out here knocking on doors for what, since May. That's a, You'd be surprised how many people notice this. They see it. Uh, they can't come to the meetings now on, on account of this uh, virus we got, but they watch it on the news or they watch it on uh, Channel 3, whatever. And they ask me, what's wrong with you guys? What What is the matter with you? Well, 
I won't go into that right now because this is not the proper time and the place to do it. But I think the board knows what's wrong and we've got to work together. And anybody that's coming on the board, new, you've got to come in with an attitude that you're gonna work with us. You're not gonna work against us, okay? Thank you, ma'am. All right, got it. So what role do you feel the Chamber of Commerce plays in the city of Hendersonville? Oh, the Chamber is, is fantastic. I mean, it, they, without the Chamber, I don't know where we would be as, as a city and you know, like I said, we've been here 43 years at the same location and we've seen some great, great uh, companies come here. We, we do need a, a corporation and I think we have a great uh, economic developer by the name of uh, Kirk. Uh, and, uh, he works, I think he works with the chamber and I think they get, get along together. I, I don't know the ins insides of it, but they they work together but that's what we're going to have to do you know people talk about rooftops rooftops well yes well uh, I, i'm just i'm just not in favor of rooftops right now i'm in favor of getting a corporation to come in here and and hire people hire our people and, and so they'll have to go to nashville or wherever to work and uh, that's going to be one of my goals to in, in the coming uh, four years. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we've kind of touched a little bit on the BOMA meetings and making sure that uh, people that are watching those can see Hendersonville in the best light. We do have uh, corporations that are looking to come to Hendersonville as well as white collar headquarters, and they do watch the BOMA meetings. If you search in the city of Hendersonville, those are videos that pop up. Um, so I agree that we definitely need to make a priority. Um, no matter who the mayor is, what are the steps we need to take to make that a better meeting? What do we need to do what, huh? What steps do we need to take to make the BOMA meetings, no matter who the next mayor is, a more cohesive meeting? <clears throat> That's a good question. Uh, I don't know where we got off base on BOMA several years ago. I don't know what happened, but uh, no one person, not the mayor, not not the not the board itself, can can do it. But you'd be surprised that th there's corporations that's been here. I'm sure that, that Catherine can verify this. It's, I don't know whether they bring it up to her or not, but you know we get wind to it at the, the way we act on the board, and it's got to change. But. Uh, uh, at this time, I, I'm not going to point fingers at nobody. Uh, I'll save that to a later date. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. All right. So before we do closing comments, how can your voters reach out to you and, and get in touch with you if they have any questions or concerns? Well, <clears throat> I think they all know me. They know where I live. They know my number. But uh, <laughs> it's a uh, 615-945-0414. Uh, J.E. Waters, Jr. at Comcast.net. Um, I really appreciate you two ladies for for the day. I've sat and watched about five or six uh, interviews. You've done a great job. Uh, all I can do is ask my constituents out here in Ward 6 is to go to the vote, go to the polls, whether it's early voting or November 3rd, but I really do need your vote and I would appreciate your support. And uh, if, you, if you need me, just give me a call. And I, in closing, I think I've got one subdivision I need to go visit and I'll do that as soon as I leave you, okay? All right, wonderful. You, we, we appreciate your time on this call. Um, Jen, thank you for everything you're doing for your ward and Kathleen. Yes, thank you so much, Alderman Waters.